In 1984, ancient plaster statues were found near Amman, Jordan, after they had been exposed by a bulldozer during highway construction. Carbon-14 dating of associated charcoal indicated that they had been buried there about 9,000 years ago, in a pit dug into the remains of an abandoned house. Because the statues were badly broken and fragile, they were removed from the ground altogether in an earthen block. The crate containing them was sent to a Smithsonian Institution laboratory near Washington, D.C. There, they could be carefully excavated and reassembled. About six months after laboratory excavation began, the tops of the statues were exposed. Dirt and rocks were taken away first to expose the plaster. Dirt was sometimes removed with a vacuum cleaner, its nozzle covered with plastic netting in order to catch any important fragments. Strings divided the deposit into squares for documentation, and photographs were taken frequently. The position of the fragments were marked on photographs to help with reassembly later on. Many large rocks like these are removed and stored in boxes. Dirt was also brushed into a spoon and saved. Dirt and rocks filled many storage boxes. By the following year, most excess dirt had been removed and clearly revealed placement of statues in the pit. The foreground area was badly damaged because that was where the bulldozer had cut through. There was considerable excitement when a bust with two heads was revealed, since it is the first statue of this type ever found. Most plaster fragments were removed singly and placed in plastic trays with paper identification tags. After cleaning, fragments were strengthened by application of an ethyl silicate solution. This was applied in a fume hood for reasons of safety. Strengthened fragments were transferred to a vented plastic tent until volatile materials completely disappeared. These represent only a small percentage of the fragments, giving an idea of the large quantity that was processed. A methyl methacrylate resin was used to join fragments after the plaster had been strengthened. Impressions left by disintegrated reed and twine armatures on the inside of the statues helped guide assembly. In this case, two rows of horizontal twine impressions were lined up. As larger areas of plaster were assembled, crosswise impressions of twine and lengthwise impression of reeds were documented to provide evidence of construction. To better understand their original construction, an armature for a two-headed bust was replicated with similar twine and reeds. The reeds were obtained from a nearby riverbank as they had been originally. Because one torso was found intact and was very large, a temporary support was used to remove it in one piece. After a plastic wrap separator was placed on the torso, 
plaster of Paris was spooned on top to create a temporary support. After the plaster had dried, a padded board was used to support the torso while it was turned over and successfully removed from the crate without breakage. Black-colored bitumen used to decorate the eyes of the statues often became detached during burial, and adjacent soil was carefully examined to locate missing pieces. A missing eyeball fragment was picked up with a brush and re-adhered to its original place with a methyl cellulose adhesive. By 1994, the crate was empty, and large sections of fragments were being prepared for final assembly. The positions of the legs on this figure were tested to determine the best compromise position for reassembly. This was necessary because of distortion of the plaster during nine millennia of burial. A statue was supported upright in order to adjust the position of a leg before it was attached. Acrylic putty had been applied earlier to fill large areas of loss on the legs, and excess was removed after the statue was upright, since this was the best position to judge the shape. A second figure was reversed for attachment of the back section, revealing on the inside gray-colored epoxy putty that provides support for the heavy statue. Transparent acrylic resin was used to join plaster fragments. Gray epoxy putty was applied underneath, always separated from original plaster by white-colored acrylic putty. Because acrylics can be dissolved with solvents, these modern materials can always be removed in the future, if necessary, for further conservation treatment. Acrylic putty fills were kept slightly lower and lighter in color so that they could never be confused with original plaster. After the putty had dried, it was filed and sanded. Watercolors or acrylic paints were used to adjust the color of the fills. Only a small eye fragment had been found for one head of a two-headed bust. A modern head was made that incorporated the fragment. It can be detached by removing a screw on the back. In total, the pit contained three two-headed busts, two standing figures, and two additional heads that probably were attached to two-headed busts. The original owners of the statues may have dressed them with clothing or other accessories that individualized the two heads of the busts, whether a man and a woman or people of the same sex. Wigs or headdresses 
probably lessened the alien appearance of the statues as they are seen today. The extraordinary 10-year efforts of nearly two dozen conservators require the development of new techniques in the art and science of conservation. These rare statues can now be seen by modern eyes and connect us to the artists who made them 9,000 years ago.